Yeah, it's good to see you guys. Um, you know, we're excited for this week. You know, the opportunity to uh, go back and look at the game. Saw a lot of improvements. You know, things that uh, that still need some improvement on. But I feel the uh, you know the ability to play with a little bit more edge on on the offensive side, and then you know the the reducing of the penalties and and the the increased discipline were all good signs and so you know it's a um it's a it's a beginning and it's a start you know we're definitely going to be challenged um coming up on saturday I, I just feel that as far as the view of um you know who we want to be and, and consistently um look like i'd say iowa state kind of is that in a lot of ways and just you know they don't beat themselves they are efficient with all their movements and kind of what they do um you know i think they're um you know they're they're a tough outfit and so a lot of respect for them a lot of respect for their coach and um you know it's going to be it is um, going to be a challenge for us and so excited for that and uh, to see kind of, uh, you know, how much we've grown in all of it. But with that, take any questions you guys got. Dave, uh, how would you describe a typical Matt Campbell team? Is it, and is it going to be kind of strange not seeing Brock Purdy and Brees Hall out there? No, I appreciate that. Yeah, I think they're a little di they are a little different. So they throw it, they're throwing it more than what they have. And, you know, I think, and, and then they're blitzing more than what they have too. And uh, and so I, you know, you could, I, you know, if you infer just those pieces in terms of the the last couple of years that I've been watching film, like we've been um, here, you know, recently, I would say, you know, he he, you know, he plays he plays to the strengths of what they got, you know, and so you could see that for sure. I think the identity of um, you know the physicality and running the ball and stopping the run and and all that for sure shows up and there and that is still there but i think the the 11 personnel you know the one back one tight end three receivers and the throwing and how quickly the ball's coming out i think is is different and new and i think the amount of blitzing you know the weak side pressure is kind of slanting into tight ends and everything is um not new but more so and so i think um as you pull away from it and look at it with a real wide lens, it fits them and it allows them to be their best. And so I would say that. Coach, in terms of the kicking game, where's your comfort level with that if you're in a situation where you're down 30 and you need a field goal to tie the game and the game? Really good. Yeah. I think, you know, the, there's, there is, I feel a lot of confidence there. And then, you know, I think the um, the ability to always, you know, go for it on fourth down is, is going to be a factor with some of that, too. And so whether it gets to that point, you know, um, and, you know, um, I think the hopefully the more touchdowns that come as a result of uh, just being aggressive on that particular down um, kind of adds up to um, a, a a different end result but then I also think you know if we got down to it and we had to we had to kick it through the uprights feel completely confident in doing that and our guys have been doing that in practice and you know we um, we we go through a lot of two-minute situations you want to go through some today you know uh, to start the week again and um, you know we've been right on it with all of it and so confident where that's at if you guys use that expression of playing green, uh -huh. uh, which I think you've described as playing fast, playing mm -hmm. aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you balance that with just, you know, not being too reckless? Or, mm -hmm. you know, obviously you, you mentioned the improvement in the penalties mm -hmm. this week. That was good. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, a guy not overrunning a, a tack, you know, a mm -hmm. ball carrier or something like that. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. It's a good question. You know, I I first look at look at that just outside of football, and so just you know, I think it goes to like how 
how different it has to be to have like a real honest conversation with somebody, you know, where they really can be forthright and say it in a way that's not ugly and all of it. And um, you guys are, you know, talking about stuff that's real as opposed to maybe my ego taking shots at your ego and your ego defending against my ego and just this whole little, you know, game within a game, like what's going on. I think so much of it is that. And so just to get to where there's an honest conversation is is way unique. I don't think it happens very often. And, you know, I, th- I think when you come across people that are authentic and genuine and not trying to be anybody else, I think that's way rare too. And I think all of that, there's so much inner work that's got to come that leads up to all that, especially when it's difficult situations. Because, you know, if the, I, you know, you go back to, I, I want to, you know, like I, to actors and the mask comes off and, you know, should I put this mask on? Is it time for this other mask and that whole thing? And so to get it to where there are no masks is um, way vulnerable for a lot of people. And so I just think the, the just as, as difficult as it is to be authentic and in, in off the field, to get to where you are all you are that type of authentic and, and genuine on the field is just as because there has to come first of all like well you know hey so this defense you line up here your eyes are on here but hey be alert for this check or the tight ends here you actually lined up there and if the tight end motions across you got to shift to this and um, if there's no backs we're in this other defense and if the tight end's not attached then we're this other defense too and it's, you know. And so you have to go through all of that piece. And then once you kind of get through that piece, then you start playing a little bit faster. All of our young guys are going through this now. And so, but then, but then it becomes like, you know, I'm, um, you know, I'm frustrated that my math class was this or that I had this learning specialist told me that I have to study and do all this stuff. <laughs> and, and why do I have to do this? And I have a class at eight o'clock and why do I have a class at eight in the morning? And you, you go, and then well, football becomes like an outlet for that. And, and, and so some of the stuff you see where the guys are just like running by guys and throwing their heads at guys and just all the stuff that's wrong. I mean, they're offloading all the stuff that they've been carrying. And so, you know, that's not it. And so, you got to go back and work on all that and get it to where, you know, the um, where the playing is really just an expression of your best self. And that takes a lot of work to do. And so to say that we have a bunch of guys that are doing that now would not be true. And so we're, we're working to get that. Dave, do you have an update on, uh, I'll list a couple names here, sorry. Tay, Ben, Monterey, Cole. I think Tay, I think, is probably going to be a little bit longer. Uh, I think Cole will probably be a little bit, could be a little bit longer. Um, we're hopeful for Ben and Monterey. Um, there's still tests that have to be taken for them to be kind of, um, um, you know, given the green light, so to speak. But things are are looking like that's going to be the case, but not yet. What about uh, Khalil Keith? He's still a ways out. Dave, out of that running back room, what does Richard Reese uniquely give you? Is there something special that he brings? He hits the line of scrimmage um, fast. And so, you know, there is a, um, you know, we talked, uh, we've talked about it some before, and it's, it's, it's really evident in um, the wide zone play where you're on the track, and we talked about the line of scrimmage can be kind of muddy water. And it sure would be great to have it really clean, you know, crystal clear. And it ain't a lot of times. And so to play full speed on your track and get the one foot in the ground and go into what could be, you know, I'm not really sure, um, is a whole thing in and of itself. And, um, you know, uh, he can do that really well. And I think that separates him from the beginning. But then I think, you know, there's such an eagerness and such a... um, um, uh, a heartfelt want to get better uh, that's kind of driving him and way appreciative of that. But then, you know, on the other side, there is also a, um, a um, I wouldn't say innocence, but I would say, you know, I think all the stuff and the, you know, the, the, and it's going to only grow as we go more, but all the, the, you know, the talk and just everything about him 
I think doesn't he doesn't really care for it, which I appreciate so much. <laughs> and so I think that just allows him to kind of be him, and it's just so cool for that to be the case. Coach, is there a, a change in maybe intensity or focus now that you're leading into conference play? You know, um, I would say you, know, you would like for every week to be to be the same, and I but to, and so like the how you prep and how you talk and how you. Um, uh, how you structure your practices, you know, I think the um, the ability to kind of not be waiting for remarkable stuff to happen, but to do the unremarkable with remarkable consistency is really what the key is. So you kind of have to, you kind of have to, um, you know, the boring, perhaps, you know, uh, mundane, you know, um, specific detail oriented things you really have to master and so that takes that takes a while to see those if you're moving too fast and looking for big things you'll miss all the little things so I would say that now I think within that though right have been on teams to where there are when you get into a week there's just an energy that's there and you feel it um, and so when that comes from a team you know um, it's all it's generally a good thing and so I think at that point, you, if the team is going like this, you as a coach just kind of bring it down and give it a, um, a, a, a runway to where, you know, we're not overflowing on a Tuesday or a Monday or what it would give you. And so I don't know if that makes sense. How have you seen Apu uh, grow and develop since the time you started recruiting him until now? No, I appreciate that. Yeah, so he, a lot of growth for him. I think um, I'm way proud of Apu, and, and I, I think he continues to um, to put his. Um, I think he continues to mature. I think a lot of maturity is just a just a, a just a different way of seeing. I think his perspective is broader. I think he can. It's not just all about him, and it's starting to be like that. And that's just so neat, man. That's the really the stuff that's the coolest of all the stuff. And so, you know. I think once we get into this 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 part of the season, as as we spoke, you know, this is the more the more attention grabbers that they are and everything. I think all you know his growth and maturity will be tested for sure. But um, you know, I'm I'm proud of him because I think you know he's emerging as a leader. We need one, and uh, you know, he's doing it in a way that I way appreciate. And I think everybody can see. And I think he's heartfelt with the stuff he says. And he still has, you know, he's still going to want to, you know, um, dance into a river a river dance at certain times. And so we're trying to quell that as best we can and just keep it all just on the field. But I think, you know, um, I think he's he's a guy that's, that's really um, done all the stuff we've asked him to do. So excited for him. Coach, you wrap up non-conference play. What have you seen from Blake in the offense through these first three games, uh, and what makes you feel confident, you know, heading into conference play from the offense? Um, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, I think the first thing would probably be, you know, um, maybe some tension and anxiety. I think would probably be the first two that come to mind. Um, I think, you know, the expectations and just the, um, I think all that stuff's real. And I don't know. I don't. I don't think it, it really does anyone any good to not talk about it. And so I think they're, you know, they've had to deal. Th they have, they've had to deal with that and work through, you know, not letting the outside come on and get to the inside. And just like the, you know, I think when you keep the focus on yourself and what you're doing, there's a chance that we call it being an artist, but a chance to be way innovative. I think when the focus is on what's on the outside and what's being said and what's all that. Then there's a, a, you know, really almost what becomes more is more reactive and more closed off and more protected. And so I think, you know, this last game in particular, we're able to break through with some of that and really kind of keep it the focus on the focus, which I'm, I'm proud of. And I think it's difficult, you know, there's just when you, when you say offense and you say those names, you say it, it's just a lot of youth. And so I think, you know, I think for us as coaches, like someone has to teach them. You know, and someone has to help them through all of it because it's a lot and it's coming fast and everything. And, you know, I think at times you want stuff 
and then you didn't know this other stuff came with the stuff that you wanted and so then when it does and then it's like hey dude it's okay right let's kind of roll through this together i think it's very much like that coach in terms of that running back position without tay it seems like every guy who you given a chance to has stepped up in some way mm -hmm. uh with richard being the most recent one what qualities does that room have to where it's like it seems like plug and play and a guy goes for 90 100 yards and a couple touchdowns um appreciate that i think i look at the first guy I think of there is Juice. Yeah, I think Juice has uh, so our, our running back coach, uh, you know, uh, Justin Johnson. He has got a great rapport with the guys, and I think you talk about mentorship just re just right now. And I think there's very much that going on. And I think um, you know his connection with that group is very much outside of football. It connects to all parts of life, and um, I think when there is that, you know, when the player feels that and knows that to be true, that that I'm being seen for more than just a player. I'm being seen for as a person and for who I am. And then there's just so much more of a um, ability at that point to kind of just let it, to show them, to reveal and put themselves out there and not hold back and not try to protect and not try to... Uh, we talked about, you know, actor studio and all this other thing. And so I just think like the, so that I think juice, and the thing is, you know, from, from my seat with all that, I can talk it all, but it, you know, the, the greatest, you know, um, player development is coach development because when things get tough, right, the, the, you coach who you are. And I think juice does a great job with that group. And so, you know, there's a strong belief there. I think, you know, you've got guys that can be perimeter guys. We've got guys that can be one-on-one -on -one matchup guys in the throw game. Um, they're all now improved in, in pass blocking, right, in knowledge of who to pass block and, and how and all of it. I think, you know, what remains to be seen is the ability to kind of be a 20-carry 20, 20 uh, uh, guy in a game Right, taking the hits that come with all of that, and kind of being at the best, at their best in the fourth quarter, and so that is, that's a challenge. Now, whether that's going to be one guy doing it or that's going to be a stable of guys that have to do that, remains to be seen. You mentioned the pressure point Saturday at halftime. Mm -hmm. You could almost feel mm -hmm. something was on edge. Mm -hmm. As someone with your background and what you study, was mm -hmm. that cleansing that people kind of released? the tension, the pressure, the expectations, and cleared it? I appreciate that. I think, um, I think we're still in the process of doing that. I, I, you know, um, yeah, so you, we're speaking about halftime. You know, I could, I could really sense in halftime just the, I think the coaches were like this, and because of that, the team was like this. And so, um, I forget exactly what I said, but it was something like, just drop it, man, like, you know. And so we, you, you, instead of being like this, you'd love to be just like that. And I just think you can play green if that's the case. And, I, you know, I, the, um, I think all of that is, you know, there has to be an emphasis on um, growing and improvement, improving, and that has to be over you know, um, proving to others that you're that you're worthy, or proving to others that that you're worth it, and I think it, we might have been we might be tilted too much in this area, and it needs to be more of an intrinsic thing. And I think, and and that's just way difficult. You know, I think there's a um, I showed it to the staff. I showed there's a scene in The Matrix, one of my favorite movies. And so there's there's a scene with Morpheus and Neo. They're on the street, and they're in The Matrix, and they're walking. And it's a, you know, so The Matrix is a program, and they're walking this way, just those two. And everyone on the street is walking the other way. And they're bumping into guys, trying to walk on through, and it's like a whole thing. And so that's what it is. It's that. So that's hard to be intrinsically and to, to be focused on who you become as a result of all of it. Right, and to be and to be, um, you know, to be process oriented when the outcomes are just so out there, is to walk against the grain with all of it. But that's the, that's the fight. That's we talk about the the task within the task. That's clearly it. And so we can't 
lose that um, in the face of these games and, you know, that we'd love to win, but could very well lose and don't control the outcome with all of it. You know, I think we keep the focus on these things. We'll continue to get better throughout the end of the year. Dave, you mentioned you want to see the offensive line play with more edge. Practically, how do you go about kind of coaching that in practice? Um, no, I appreciate that. I think it's the it goes. I think that's tied with what we just talked about. I think you know, you have to. Um, I think when guys are not playing with edge, I think they're carrying other things, and they have to drop what they're carrying. And that could be that could be. Um, you know, the feeling of overwhelm of whether it's school now and just the daily schedule that a lot of guys have. It could be expectations, right, and the stuff they're putting on themselves. Um, it could be, you know, the tenseness and anxiety that's passed over from a coach, okay? And really, you know, a player is now going to prove that he belongs by perfection, by doing everything right and everything else. And so it's just, you know, I don't – you don't play football by paint by numbers, man, you know? And so, yeah, I mean, the stuff's gonna go outside the lines, right? Just be you and all of that and, and let it, let the stuff you carry and let it go. And so I think that's for each, I think that's kind of a general thing. That's a general talk right there, but there's for each dude, it's way specific. So you have to see where guys are at and meet them there and work it out at that level. Hey, but we're in Hispanic Heritage Month right now. Uh, you're one of the few in Division One football that's, you know, a Hispanic head coach. You know, is that something you're proud of to to represent? I appreciate that. Yeah, I don't ever, I don't think about that. I imagine, I don't know if that's wrong to say during this month, but I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, um, um, yeah, I, I do, though, when you pause and you step back. I think it is, it is, um, well, I'll say this. So I, when our our punter got married um, this, uh, I think it was this, was it the spring? Spring or summer? Summer, I think. And my wife and I, Dion, we went to the wedding, and... Uh, it was, I it, um, forget the name of the town, actually. It's down south, so we were there. And I remember, so we got in Friday night. The wedding was on Saturday morning. And um, I, so it, was, it was right by the water, so Dion, Dion and I get out. We get a cup of coffee, and we're just walking on the water there. And um, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but I remember seeing there is, there is um, Mexican-American people there and I remember seeing a Mexican American American in a suit, and I just and it kind of paused me because I remember when was the last time I've seen a Mexican dude in a suit, and it, it, I'd always I'd went back to when I was in I was in school I was in high school when I lived back home where I'm from in Redlands, and you know, you're probably someone in my family because generally when you see Mexicans I I don't know for me I don't really see that you don't really see it. And so I remember I'm seeing a guy in a suit, and I keep walking, and then there's another guy. And I don't know, maybe it was something going on. Maybe there's some type of conference or something, but I'm just seeing it. It's like it, it pauses you, and you just don't you, – you I remember telling my wife kind of what was going on, and, and she was – I don't know, I'm hoping everyone's keeping up because she was struggling to kind of keep up with it. But it's just I think when for people like I could be that person in a suit, that's just way strong. And, uh, yeah, I, I, that is a real thing. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave.